Mark chapter 4 verse 37 it says the following and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat that it was already so it so that it was already filling and he was in the stern asleep on the pillow and they awoke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing verse 39 then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and then he said to them why did you wake me up <laughs> that's not what he said <laughs> sort of <laughs> i feel like anytime anybody wakes up whatever the reason is you know you fix it and then you're like really why did you wake me up <laughs> you interrupted my nap he said why are you so fearful how is that you have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said to one another who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him I want you to see in the beginning what it says in here is the great wind arose and the waves beat on the boat until the boat was being filled but he was in the boat let me say it again the great wind you can't see the wind the wind is something that is invisible to the eye you can't touch the wind you can't uh, smell the wind it's not visible it's an invisible entity and this wind the scripture says caused the waves to be unsettled the waves to be boisterous the waves to arise and these physical waves that you can see started to beat on the boat and not only they were beating on the boat they started to fill the boat with water until to the point that the boat was being filled with water and disciples panicked and all while this was happening Jesus the Son of God was in the boat winds cause waves spiritual entities cause physical problems invisible entities cause visible tangible feelable issues for example there are waves of addiction that are caused by the wind of bondage the bible says jesus says i tell you most assert, uh, most solemnly that anyone who chooses a life of sin is trapped in a dead end life that is in the fact a slave that tells me that behind an addiction is a spiritual entity this entity is what I would call it a wind you can't see it but the effects of wind are very real a person that is addicted to drugs a person that's maybe addicted to alcohol perhaps addicted to um, gambling addicted perhaps to pornography addicted to some other destructive behaviors and on the outside these waves they beat into the boat but they're really caused by the wind they're caused by a spiritual entity so our goal is not to stop the waves our goal is to stop the wind and the waves will be at peace there's also a wave of sickness that's caused by the wind of spirit of infirmity the scripture says and behold there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could no way and, and could, could in no way raise her up Luke chapter 13 verse 11 this sickness that this woman had was like a wave people could see it it was affecting her finances it was affecting her physical posture but the scripture says that behind this wave that was beating her boat there was a wind causing this wave and this wind was a spirit of infirmity so Jesus didn't pronounce healing first he first commanded the evil spirit to leave this woman's body he told the wind to stop and the waves became calm her body straightened up and so sometimes behind a physical repeated chronic illness is a spiritual entity that pushes and advances the agenda of the devil that's why Jesus says he came to heal those oppressed by the devil 
Jesus came to heal you would think they just got sick but it says oppressed by the devil he came to visit Peter, uh, Peter's mother-in-law and then he rebuked fever he didn't heal her of fever he rebuked fever that tells me the winds cause the waves spiritual forces they cause physical problems there's also a wave of poverty or something that is physical but it could be caused spiritually there was a scripture in 2 Samuel 21 verse 1 it says there was a famine in the days of David for three years year after year and David inquired of the Lord and the Lord said it is because Saul and his bloodthirsty house because he killed Gibeonites so the physical problem where for three years they had famine the farming died the economy tanked the stock market went down people were losing jobs and David went to the Lord first year okay that's weather second year okay perhaps it's the weather global warming I don't know some, some kind of a thing is happening and after the third year David is like you know this is not normal this is not right it's been three years I think when it happens first time you can blame it on circumstances happens second time okay you're gonna have to start getting cautious when it happens third time you know you're gonna have to raise some questions and start inquiring of the Lord what is happening because these waves are not normal and they were caused by the wind there were spiritual forces and entities that were causing financial calamity in the time of David and David dealt with it and when he dealt with the wind the waves became calm there is also a wave of accident prone of accidents when you constantly have unexplainable accidents car accidents work injuries gym injuries and you're you know following the rules you're doing all the right stuff doing doing it properly and you constantly have accidents and then you trace it down your family tree and you realize you're not the only one people are constantly missing limbs missing fingers or missing other stuff in the family there's accidents that is happening to them always at work and they're always either on this ability and so and some of us can look at that and say well he's just not lucky well can, can I remind you of a verse in the bible where Joshua conquered Jericho and he pronounced a curse over the city of Jericho now the guy who bought the city who became the king did not do an investigation spiritual investigation he starts building a house and the Bible says the moment he builds the walls one of his sons die the moment he finishes the gates another son dies so there was this accident the fact that two of his kids died prematurely was not an accident it was a consequence what am I saying sometimes people move in into the houses that people committed suicides where witchcraft was practiced people get cars sometimes that were devoted to demons and were transporting the drugs and some will say well well you're just kind of pushing it a little bit too far and the next thing that happens in that car you have an accident and you die somebody else dies and then there were if you read the break free book i have a whole thing about a particular car that was used in hollywood every actor that bought that car suffered death or somebody died in his family the guy transporting the car the car rolled down and crushed them they broke the pieces of that car and sold it every person who got the piece of that car off of ebay bad accidents happened and so you, you you can't explain those things away what we understand as christians is there is a wind you can't see the causes the waves you can see and sometimes that wind a spiritual entity is stirring up waves circumstances finances you know health issues relationships other things it gets stirred up and these waves become boisterous and they beat on your boat they beat on your mind they beat on your pocket they beat on your relationship and they beat and it's hard it hurts you bleed inside you're suffering and not only that they, they want to fill your boat with depression with darkness with despair they want to fill you on the inside with defeat and despair of life they want to fill you on the inside and all while you have Jesus living inside of you and how could I explain that Savior is sleeping but he's there Jesus didn't jump the boat. I'm gonna give you one more, two more waves. Anxiety and depression is another way. Yeah. Anxiety could be physical. Depression could also be something that you just overloaded and you, you re had really hard time. But the Bible makes me to understand that the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit troubled him. The Bible also says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So heaviness, sometimes it could be you didn't have your morning coffee. 
heaviness could be just you woke up and honestly you just didn't sleep for the last you know month really well you, it's really difficult um, for your for your health maybe uh, kids are going back to school or they have not been to school and you have to raise them now you have to be the teacher on the top of being their mom or their dad and so there could be that heaviness but things get sorted out you find the new routine and heaviness departs but if it's been three months if it's now been three years that heaviness might not be emotional it's probably spiritual if these waves are beating on your boat and filling your boat perhaps these waves are caused by the wind you cannot see and just because you cannot see it it doesn't mean you should ignore it just because you can't verify it doesn't mean that you should avoid it it doesn't mean you should put it under the carpet and say well this is just just life just the waves Jesus lives inside of me I'm just being beaten and filled with the waves but life just not fair yes it's not fair but you also have a spiritual eyes and you understand there is a wind that's causing all that also fear is a wave for example the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear but spirit of power love and sound mind so that tells me that when you are a young person you have no underlining issues and you're scared to get out of your house that's not emotional that's spiritual it paralyzes you you're afraid to take any steps and somebody a mile across coughs and you get paranoid that's not normal you're not afraid to drive a car there's a high chance of being dead by driving a car it means that a person now has a fear that is controlling them we all feel fear please understand all of us feel fear especially if you get sick or um, you know one of your uh, you lose a job or something there's a common fear but when you are paralyzed when you are controlled and you cannot do anything about it and you are stuck at home and there is no physical evidence for feeling what you're feeling but you are trapped in it it's a wave beating your boat filling your boat caused by the wind come on somebody and so I just want to speak to people that are watching right now if you are in that storm right now if you are in that emotional spiritual storm right now where you feel like there's these waves that are beating my boat and they are filling my boat your situation I know you blamed it on the president you blamed it on the pandemic you blamed it on your boss you blamed it on other people but honestly you need to take responsibility today and rise against the wind that's causing the waves instead of blaming the waves come on somebody if you ever do a yard work in your house and in your house you have a spider when you clean the spider webs you most likely will not see a spider at the time that you see spider webs the house that we lived in before and and when I would mow the grass and I would see these spider webs all around the rocks around my house the crazy part is every time I saw the spider web I never saw the spider I wanted to see that sucker they made all of that stuff you know and squash him and, and, and take care of him and I always saw the web never saw the spider but see I didn't come to the conclusion that spiders don't exist because I don't see them the spider web was a confirmation that spiders exist stirred up boisterous waves beating on your boat and filling your boat is a confirmation that is a wind that's causing all of this and so your war is not with the waves that's why my message today is at war with the wind at war with the spiritual principalities and powers your war is not with your husband and it's not with your wife it's with spiritual forces your wife is not a snake she's your spouse your husband is not the snake he is your husband the devil is the snake the demons are the snake I know your wife may be act like a snake your husband might act like a snake but listen they're just a wave tossed by the wind <laughs> come on somebody attacking your spouse will not cause the wind to go away attacking the waves will not stop the wind Jesus did not attack the waves he spoke to the wind meaning he spoke to the invisible entity causing the physical reaction he spoke to the root of the problem instead of dealing with the symptoms of the problem he went looking for a spider instead of cleaning the spider web so my friends the bible says our battle is not physical it's not against flesh and blood it's against principalities powers and wicked hosts in the spiritual places we have a battle and we are engaged in a spiritual warfare the weapons of our warfare are mighty in God to pull down the strongholds in the realm of the spirit why because this world is way more spiritual
spiritual than we realize. This world is way more spiritual than we understand. This world is way more spiritual than many of us live as it is. And today is the time to declare war. Today is the time to declare victory. Today is the day to tell every demon of sickness, every demon of depression, every demon of fear, every demon of heaviness, you gotta go. You gotta go in Jesus' mighty name. We take authority over you. We take victory over you. And we crush you today in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe in the authority that you have in Jesus, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Winds and waves obey Him. Spiritual world responds to Christ. And I want to share with you practical three tips or solutions for this hour in dealing with spiritual warfare. If you're in war with the wind right now, if you feel the effect of the spiritual attack on your sleep, if you feel the effect of spiritual attack on your thoughts they seem intrusive it's just if you would split your mind open your thought life looks like what this looks like waves are beating the boat and filling up the, with water meaning thoughts are beating you instead of comforting you and your mind is overwhelmed maybe the the consequences of that is in your sleep perhaps you're even feeling that physically in your body it doesn't mean Jesus jumped the boat. Just because you're attacked, it doesn't mean Jesus jumped into the mouth of a whale like Jonah. Jesus didn't leave you. In fact, he didn't abandon you and he didn't forget you. And the same suffering that you feel, he feels because he's in your boat. He lives in your heart. He feels what you feel. He sympathizes with you. And maybe the first thing I want to share, wake up desperation. When disciples got hit with waves and the wind, they became desperate. Now this is not, in fact, they, I don't think they had a lot of faith. Look at this prayer life. Teacher, do you not care? It sounds like an upset wife. <laughs> Every husband can probably has heard this conversation. You don't care. You don't love me anymore. And uh, we're not close. And so, I mean, very... Uh, very unbelieving I read this and I don't see one ounce of faith in here do you not care that we are perishing what I see here is desperation I see panic but as much as we like to attack this it worked it got Jesus woken up and not only that Jesus out of his compassion calmed the storm stopped the wind and spoke to the sea. I'm going to tell you, when you lack faith, make sure you don't lack desperation. <laughs> if you don't have any faith at all, and your prayer looks like a whining list, I'm going to tell you one thing. God will never reject your prayer, even if it lacks faith, but it has heart. God looks at the heart, and Jesus knew they had no faith at all. He rebuked them and corrected them later but at first he did not correct them. At first he helped us their situation because he saw Jesus will honor desperate, panicking, crying people. He hears their cry. He will stretch his hand toward their need. So for those of you who are like, man, but I don't have any faith. The only thing I have is a cry. Listen, God's voice will hear that cry. And some of us, what we need is we need to wake up desperation. What bothers me is people who need deliverance who don't have desperation. Who are dormant because they domesticated their demons. They have domesticated their oppression. They have domesticated their addiction. They have domesticated the night terrors. They made it their own and said this is just runs in the family. Well it better stop with you. It better stop with me. I know it was running in my family until it ran to me. Maybe smoking ran in the family. Maybe drugs ran in the family. Well, when it ran into you, it has to stop. But the problem with many of us, and some people ask me, pastors may ask me, they're like, you know, in the Western countries, demons go, don't get, don't come out of people. Deliverance is not as practiced. And I said, well, there's just one big problem with us is that we domesticate our demons. 
we give them disorder names we give them labels and we treat them mainly with medicine not against medicine we're not against therapy and counseling we as a ministry pay for it for people to receive counseling we have people on the stage in the pastoral team who receive that and we encourage people to see counseling because deliverance deals with the demon it doesn't deal with your soul a lot of times I, I believe in that but I also believe that if your situation did not woken up your desperation my friend you either domesticated something that's supposed to be delivered and removed or you're asleep and that's why I think the Lord sometimes allows certain problems to heat up so they can wake us up wake up our passion wake up our prayer and it's a good thing my friend I know the, the Christianity may look at that and say well that lacks faith well you're only doing it because you're you're suffering you're only crying out because you're hurting right now it's okay Jesus understands he will understand and he will hear the cry of a desperate mother praying for her child cry of a desperate grandfather praying for the grandchildren he will hear your desperate cry even if it has no faith even if it's not theologically proper even if it's not prophetic professional and polite if it has a passion inside if it has a cry inside if it has a desperation inside if it has a voice inside Jesus will hear it he will honor your prayer he will come to you and help you you know desperation precedes deliverance when your faith lacks prayer make sure it doesn't lack heart dormant people domesticate their demons Dormant people worry more about dignity than their deliverance. Dormant people have pretense professional prayers that lack passion. Desperation will always get Jesus' attention. I used to feel guilty for desperation without faith. By reading a lot of stories in the Bible, I don't see professionalism. Blind Bartimaeus, his prayer wasn't professional. Son of David, have mercy on me. What kind of a prayer is that? When you're blind you're supposed to be asking help me with my sight he's not even praying it right a man who came into the temple and beat himself in the chest and said have mercy on me he didn't even officially say lord i for i repent for my sin and the bible says and he left and god had more favor on him not professional not polite not structured not even always theologically correct but when your heart has its way because life has dealt painful blow to you the waves have beat your boat they're filling up your mind and there is a cry that only someone desperate can understand. There is a God who sees the heart behind that cry even if there is no faith at all even if you are so tired of of not seeing the deliverance or so tired of not seeing the breakthrough and you're just disappointed and you're blaming God and you're questioning God and your prayer looks like why do you not care you left me and abandoned me I'm gonna tell you one thing if it comes from your heart God will hear it God will respond to it God will help you to answer that prayer amen learn to cry desperately learn to cry not professionally learn to see God's face in a way that gets his attention even if you look back at there like what was I saying that, that was horrible that's not even right but Jesus will look at you he will see your heart and I love this he saw their heart even though he saw no faith the second thing I want to mention that if you are in a spiritual warfare right now not only learn to cry out to God learn to say help Jesus learn to say I can't do this anymore Lord please help me it's not a suicidal prayer it's just a desperate cry this is not your life is not over no you're just you're hurting so much that you're just you can't put right words into it please understand Jesus does not have a theological scanner that scans how theologically sound your words are he has a heart scanner that checks your heart sees is this coming from the heart and if it comes from the heart but it's not right he will answer it the second thing I want to mention is not only to wake up desperation but number two wake up faith after you've cried your cry after you've said your prayers after accused after you accused God for leaving you and not caring for you after you've done the stuff you jumped you walked around the Jericho walls you stomped on the wall you made a declaration you blamed everybody you told you threatened God you told him if he doesn't do it you're gonna quit after you've done all of that and nothing happened <laughs> listen to me very carefully now instead of that's good that you woke up desperation now wake up faith 
because when Jesus stopped the storm and he spoke to the waves I want you to notice what he did he came to these precious disciples and he said what is wrong with you he said what the heck is wrong with you he didn't say that word because he was perfect he said where is your faith that tells me he expected them to stop the storm Jesus would have never accused them of something that they were not capable of doing our Lord never does that God will never accuse you for not flying to, to Mars you're not capable of doing that he said where is your faith what he demonstrated to the wind was expression of that faith and now he's asking them you guys woke me up why didn't you wake up your faith because it was not only your desperation that was dormant it was your faith that was dormant he says where is your faith why do you have no faith but you are so fearful and so I want to just speak for a minute desperation cries but faith confronts desperation is directed toward God faith is directed toward the devil desperation complains faith commands desperation see dormant faith will complain but your your quickened faith will confess God's word desperation will question God's love but faith will quote God's love desperation will say God do you really love me but faith will say God you do love me and because you love me I will overcome this complaining relies on someone's anointing to help me but faith quickens the anointing I have inside of me to overcome my enemy come on somebody complaining speaks about the problem but faith speaks to the problem complaining creates fears but when you begin to speak faith you put your fears to sleep and so a lot of us what happens is that complaining is a lot of times ruled by feelings but faith is ruled by the word of God the biggest difference between the cry of disciples and the commanding of Jesus is this one was ruled by feelings and I'm going to tell you again I'm going to give you permission no matter how long you've been in God give yourself permission it's okay to complain read book of Psalms David was the man of God half of his Psalms cry baby the way he accused God the way he questioned God you're like this guy is this guy even saved it's okay to it's give yourself permission people who always bottle it up and pretend that they have all the faith but please understand when you've cried your cries wake up your faith because that's what David did you read in many of his psalms starts complaining and whining and ends praising God ends confessing God's word your faithfulness is great your 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 fidelity is great and he begins to say he will deliver me and he will speak for me and he was just like what happened because David woke up desperation and then he also woke up his faith your faith will cause you to speak to the storm your faith will cause you to speak to the night terrors and begin to say I rebuke you in Jesus name because Jesus who slept in the storm he spoke to the storm he spoke right into the wind and he says I command you to be silent he rebuked the wind as though like it's a spiritual entity and so when you have a nightmare you have an option you can complain or you can command you can command it to go you can command it to stop you can command it to quiet down you can command it the chairs to stop moving in your house you can command the intrusive thoughts to go you have the power of the name Jesus living in your boat you have the power of the Word of God living inside of you and you don't have to complain you can also command you can also confront you can also speak to the enemy you can also speak to that sickness you can also speak to your own soul David did many times he says why are you disquieted within me oh my soul you can speak to yourself you can speak to your situation you can speak what God's Word says amen, amen. you may say but I speak and it doesn't work if it's not inside of you the only Jesus the only reason why what Jesus spoke worked is because Jesus was willing first to sleep in the storm before he spoke to the storm if you can sleep in it you can speak to it effectively what that means the storm was never inside of him he was in the storm the storm was not inside of him you know what was inside of Jesus was God's peace he slept in the storm you may say well it's so hard to have peace when everything around me is really really bad you probably have been in a boat have you noticed it's really hard to stay dry when everything around you is wet but when you have a boat it's easy 
when you have God's word it's easy the only secret to sleep in a storm is you have to stand on what God says not on what you feel what you see what the doctor's report says or what the feed on Facebook says or what your spiritually insensitive uh, prophets say who bring fear into your life if you stand on the boat of God's word you will stay dry when everything around you is wet you will stay full of faith when everything around you is fearful but the moment you go into your feelings you will get wet the moment you go into facts you will get wet the moment you go into symptoms you will get wet the moment you are going to live by your bank account or by what doctor says or by what your friends think or what you feel you will get spiritually wet speak to your situation command that thing to go command that evil spirit to depart in Jesus name you have the authority in the name of Jesus but one more thing I want to share and that is this a, a few chapters later if we go to chapter 6 if you can uh, turn with me to chapter 6 of Mark and the verse is 48 the verse is 48 Jesus goes to the mountain to pray and he saw them straining at rowing for the wind was against them now I want you to see a second time a wind goes against disciples but Jesus this time is not in the boat he's on the top of the mountain and he's seeing the whole thing in 4k now the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea and would have passed them by and when of course they saw him they were surprised in verse 51 then he walked into the boat to them and the wind ceased I got a revelation from that he was in the wind in the waves and he spoke to the wind and it stopped but in here he was showing something even better if you speak to the wind and it doesn't stop God wants you to walk on the wind what did Jesus do he walked on the waves that were caused by the wind the waves that were stirred up by the wind you can imagine this wasn't a some of us see the movies where Jesus walks on the water and it's all calm this wasn't calm this was a storm Jesus was walking over those waves caused by the wind he did not rebuke the wind he walked on it and when he got to where he was supposed to be the wind stopped on its own sometimes you gotta cry out sometimes you gotta rebuke and sometimes you just gotta walk on the top of it you prayed the prayer, you fasted the fast, you have rebuked it, you have anointed your house with the oil, you have claimed the blood, you applied the armor of God and what do you do? You say, but the wind is not stopping. Walk on it. Because my Bible makes me to understand. In Malachi 4 verse 2, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with, winning, with healing in his wings. You shall go out and grow fat, praise God, like stall fat cows. And then it says this, you shall trample the wicked, the devil. Trample the demonic spirits. Trample fear. Trample anxiety. Trample the things you couldn't be delivered. It seems like God is not removing, but God is giving you authority to trample on. Meaning you walk on the waves. You walk on those things. You will trample the wicked lie 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 and they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this says the Lord of hosts Luke chapter 10 verse 19 behold I give you authority to trample upon the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you that means as you walk on it you will not drown as you walk on it in authority in dominion as you walk in who you are in Christ over it even if there is still sickness in your body even if the enemy still seeks to attack your mind you will say I'm walking with the Lord I am walking in my authority I know who I am in Jesus I have the anointing of most high God I take every step forward with God the Bible says nothing by no means shall hurt you Psalm 81 verse 13 it says oh that my people would listen to me that Israel would walk in my ways I will soon subdue their enemies turn my hand against their adversaries meaning God says sometimes you will cry out and I deliver you sometimes you step out in faith and you will find deliverance for yourself but all that my people would walk in my ways 
walk above that situation don't drown in it walk above the sickness why because you are seated in heavenly places not in the diagnosis of cancer you are seated in heavenly places not in the healing of your fear why because God expects you to walk on it because through the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace you are called to reign in life walk on it but it's not stopping Pastor Vlad but the waves are still there walk on it because once you step into your boat the wind ceased there was no rebuking there was no commanding there was no stopping they were just stepping on it if it didn't stop step on it if it didn't cease step on it and walk on it every day that you wake up wake up with authority wake up putting on the armor of God putting on the armor of God and walk on it Jesus healed a paralytic man and the Bible says he didn't take away his bed and says now go home he says take up your bed and walk meaning the Lord was saying now you're gonna exercise you're gonna carry that which carried you you're gonna walk on that which walked over you walk on the wind walk on the waves walk above it every single day trample by walking because every time you step on that every time you keep your joy in the middle of the situation not changing you are trampling on the devil's plan every time you're keeping your peace when nothing is changing you might not see it in the realm of the spirit but in the realm of the spirit you are trampling on that and God says all oh, that my people would walk in my ways God never created you for deliverance he created you for dominion he created you for authority he created you to reign in life and sometimes I feel like it's what God told Joshua in Judges in, in Judges what it says that and these are the nations that the Lord left that he might test Israel by them that those who have not known any wars in Canaan might learn to know the war at least those who had not formally known Joshua Judges 3 verse 1 and 2 I believe that sometimes God doesn't deliver us from certain things because he empowers us to trample them he empowers us to walk on them he empowers us to pick up the bed and to walk he wants to see will you stay faithful when you feel fearful when you stay will you stay on fire when you still feel the consequences of that if you think the Lord just magically will remove everything bad in your life my friend you're living in a fantasy that doesn't happen on this side of eternity because God called you to be a soldier not a slave and how is he gonna equip the soldier sometimes by letting certain things and saying hey I want you to walk on it I want you to walk over it I want you to walk in my ways and by walking in my ways you are walking in your spiritual victory in your spiritual armor amen the Lord is about to do his work in our midst especially for people who are watching us on live stream I believe there will be a mass deliverance taking place this morning people who will be watching right now and re-watching will be experiencing the power of God we've seen it this week when we were praying people were throwing up and puking in their own house and being delivered I'm not saying that that's what you should expect we don't come expecting puking we expect freedom amen but we're also we don't care about dignity as more as we care about our freedom we, we care more about walking with God than how we look in front of people. In Jesus' name, amen.